This video is only going to be talking about the logic behind why men hate school and why young boys are unintentionally conditioned to hate school. Most of the material has come directly from the book Men Interrupted by Philip Zimbardo and Nikita Colom, so credit where credit's due. It's pretty heavily talked about that the school system is overall broken, but no one really wants to talk about how or why it's broken. And it's not only broken for students, it's broken for the teachers as well. Because schools get funded based on test results, teachers and schools base their structure on memorization and better test scores instead of trying to stimulate critical thinking or curiosity or sometimes they don't even give a kid like a good reason why they need to learn the material in the first place this form of teaching only based on memorization can even dumb down the teachers to a certain extent and they just feel like they're not being challenged enough a lot of times when a teacher just reiterates what's already in a textbook that that's not why they became a teacher in the first place they didn't want to become a teacher to just regurgitate what's already written down. Oftentimes, it's the school instructing them to do so. I can recall very clearly a, a few separate instances of teachers in the first half of the lesson just regurgitating what the textbook tells them to do, and in the second half of the lesson, they just scroll on their computer looking at things to buy or even just watching Netflix. It's been proven that kids who have better compounding teachers throughout their years in school have a better chance of going to university and have a less likelihood of becoming teenage parents. But because teachers don't have enough financial incentives or a status to work for in society, kids just end up being bogged down by memorization and boring homework, all in the name of school funding. And it's not just the school's fault. A lot of For a lot of kids, their parents are just so overworked. And instead of caring about the kids' academic struggles, Instead, they only care about the end of the year report cards. And furthermore, taking a step backwards, many schools have also completely eliminated recess from, from just normal school days. And this leaves kids in a situation where they just have nowhere to release their pent up energy except for the classrooms. Now, combining this restlessness in the classroom with lazy, boring assignments given by the school based only on memorization and not that that's not stimulating or challenging enough, it's no surprise kids will naturally just do anything and literally move away from the tasks that they need to focus on. Or they're simply just tempted to browse on their phone. Brains in boys and girls develop differently. This is just a fact. Boys are going to be more physically active and girls are going to be more verbally mature. The book specifically cites that roughly a three and a half year old girl is just as verbally mature as a five year old boy. And with no recess and being given intense reading exercises, uh, that, that's more appropriate for young girls over boys, young boys are just naturally going to develop resistance and animosity towards the whole school system in general. And moreover, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, you should definitely talk to your physician, but this bottled up energy in boys could be a main reason statistically for why more boys over girls are being prescribed drugs like Ritalin and Adderall. Now why is recess good? Because studies have shown that more exercise can increase memory, focus, and academic abilities. Also, another situation that the book uh, describes, I, I just, I had no idea about. I never knew this, this even existed. But studies have shown that when tests are graded anonymously, the gender gap decreases by a third. And, it and the book describes that there is a gender bias against young boys, generally by opposite sex teachers. So when tests are graded anonymously, the boys end up doing better than what they originally did before. I should also note that both boys and girls do equally as good in school with same-sex teachers. There's also evidence that young boys and young men are more responsive to external and outside rewards and get less gratification for being a good student compared to other young women and girls. Now, the book specifically cites that both peer acceptance and a, and a sense of independence usually mean more than school for both young men and young, uh, young women. But unlike young men, however, young women still let each other work hard at school. A young man might see the value in working hard at school, but he'll downplay homework and formal achievement to pursue more peer acceptance with his other male classmates. The book also talks about some really good solutions that I, I wanted to bring up here. Now, some schools, they never really tell a kid why they need to be learning specific uh, tasks or skills. So if schools and teachers want to teach 
kids practical skills that'll come in use later on in their careers, the most effective and proven way is to establish apprenticeships and programs like after or during school, such as maybe wood shop, like woodworking, uh, robotics, um, working with metals. Programs that kids themselves have suggested include life skills like setting a budget, personal finance management, how to file taxes and potentially tax laws in other countries, handling job interviews, handling the death of a relative or something. There is actually a documentary titled Race to Nowhere, and there is a high school based in Oregon, and they ran this experiment completely eliminating all homework. And what were the results? Kids started learning and engaging a whole lot better. Teachers should really learn from the video game industry because nowadays the world is going down this this dangerously dark path where where people are going to be overstimulated every hour every hour and every minute of their life. It's not going away. But what schools can do better is make learning and 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 taking tests more stimulating and engaging and more fun. When I was in eighth grade, I literally had a history teacher tell tell the whole class, this isn't a place to laugh, this is a place to learn. Kids are just too used to immediate feedback from their devices. So if, so if teachers just remain ignorant to this fact, it's, it's, it's almost like a law of nature at this point. Kids will zone out of class and, and be more and more tempted to go on their phone. Tests also need to be as anonymous as possible. One thing that my high school did was we had this software and, and these multiple choice sheets. We wrote the number on our school ID at the top and we just held it at a at a, a webcam and the and the computer would literally grade it in a second and that's how that's how we anonymized our testing system by no means am i saying this is only this could only be limited to uh uh women, female teachers to uh male students this could happen exactly the same way with male teachers to female students kids also need to learn and they need to be able to see that hard work and really putting the, the effort into something pays off. Kids shouldn't be told that they're special for just doing nothing because inherently the kids will eventually think that because they're special, they won't need to try at anything and they'll develop the sense of entitlement. If we heavily normalize giving out participation medals just for showing up, then the kids who actually did try hard will show skepticism or they'll build a sense of skepticism and they'll develop a sense of falseness in all kinds of praise from adults because if you don't know what I mean when someone praises me for doing something good or really putting putting in good work and getting a good result I almost take offense to it or I just think that they're lying I think they're just being deceptive and they're saying yeah good job good job because I couldn't tell the difference from when I was uh, younger between my praise and praise on kids who didn't try as hard when I was uh, living in Dubai I wasn't a rich kid when I was living in Dubai, and I was heavily bullied for that throughout my time from kindergarten to eighth grade. So when people praise me just the same as the rich kids where maybe their parents were funding the school, I just couldn't tell a difference. If you're interested in reading more about this topic, I'll leave a link to the book in the description, Man Interrupted. If you have any suggestions for topics you want me to talk about, talk, ask me down below or on Twitter because I'm trying to start doing more videos throughout the week, at least three videos a week. Right now it's only two, but I wanna become more efficient to the point where I'm making these, these high quality videos at least three times a week. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.